Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. I was just too busy welcoming my new little pet to the gang. So, this particular stuffed animal has become a bit of a meme among the trans community. And, well, I've got a few theories as to why, but I'm not entirely sure. I guess the first question the answer is, how did I end up with this little guy? Well, for Christmas, my mother gave me this gift that was expensive, but I didn't really want it. After expressing my dislike for it, she just decided to give me the cash for it. And what I got is not only this little guy, but also a few new t-shirts. <laughs> because, yeah, I've fallen in love with graphic tees all over again now that I can buy them in women's sizes now. But as for a few little theories as to how this guy became such a trans icon, well, when I first heard about this little shark, I'm not sure how to pronounce them, so if you're Swedish, you can feel free to write in the comments. I've heard some say Blohai, I've heard others say Blahaj, and yeah, I, I don't know. So, this cute little feller was made by Ikea, and from what I can tell, they originally came in gray, but then they started making them in blue. When I first heard about it, I was told that these were meant to be kind of a limited run item. They'd be sold only during Pride Month several years ago, and the proceeds were gonna go to support Rainbow Alliance organizations and stuff like that. However, I don't know if there's any truth to that. And then I hear some say it's the color scheme as to why this became a trans icon. You got the blue with the trans flag, you got the pink for the mouth, you got the white for the underbelly. And one theory I just made up myself is the idea that, well, a shark is something that's considered a bit more on the masculine side. But for me, as I started transitioning, I become a bit of a cuddler. And, well, this is a way to be able to kind of enjoy that love of cuddling as well as not have to worry about being judged for it. <laughs> I don't know. But either way. This guy's real cute. However, that is not the main thing we are here to discuss. Put you off to the side there for now. Put you in the nice ocean. And I'll talk to you later. This video is an update of where I am in my transition. I guess really the first thing to mention is most of this month, like, well, a lot of the other months at this point, have mostly been philosophical changes, different ways of thinking that I never really thought of before. And the first thing that started that off was this manga I found called Stop Habari Kum. I already did a video on it, reviewing the story and everything, but the main thing it put into perspective is to why my dad is a little more off put by it. Because the main character in the manga it's vague. I consider them trans myself. Some may say femboy, some may say a lot of other things, but personally I say trans. And she has a father that very much disapproves of this, as he wants somebody to be able to continue the empire that he's created. And I'm thinking that's probably the reason why my dad doesn't approve of me transitioning as well. That, and he probably thinks I'm all kinds of messed up, much like Habari's father was in the manga. And, <laughs> it's weird how it's a comedy manga, but it honestly made me stop and think quite a few times. I know in past months I've been talking about the hormonal situation. Stuff has just not really been sitting right, to say the least. So, I'm on a new tea blocker, which not only is this much cheaper, as of now, I think it's working all right. It, it's kind of hard to tell because there are moments I have like really horny patches again, which to me that's a sign of high tea. And sometimes it feels like I have to shave a bit more often. Also a sign, but I don't know. It feels like it's working in other ways that the other tea blocker never did. And one of the big things I liked is it said that it could even help with breast growth, and I don't know if it's a placebo effect, or maybe it's just the way my body is at this moment, but I do feel like I'm getting a little bigger. In fact, 
the bras I have are starting to get a little tighter, which is nice And the idea that, wow, more boobage, that's really nice. But I'm a little worried that I might have to start buying new bras now. And for those of you that don't know, bras as well as just women fashion in general is just very expensive. But all the same, it is something a little exciting. So I watched a fair bit of YouTube videos from other trans women on, well, YouTube. And there is where I got some more philosophical ideas on transitioning. And one of them talked about the idea of a trans plateau. The idea that it seems like there becomes a flat line after a while. And this is something I've felt very much in terms of physical changes. I feel like after the year mark, I've mostly just been talking about philosophical stuff because I feel like I don't really have a whole lot to mention. I guess looking back, my hair looks a little different now. It seems to be laying a little more flatter. Maybe that's something. Perhaps my face has changed in subtle ways, but yeah, after that year mark, I have a very hard time seeing much of a difference. There is this idea that what used to be like brand new and exciting just becomes every day. Like, I guess a good example I have about this is like wearing a nice dress. I mean, this is something that still excites me a little bit, but... Not as much as when I first started to wear a dress. It's the idea that instead of it being exceptional, it just becomes the norm. So one very interesting thing happened this month. A friend of mine is an inspiring Dungeons and Dragons master, or maybe it would just be DM for short. And he wanted to get a bit of a campaign going with me, as well as a few other friends. So yeah, I, I feel like I'm kind of falling into a bit of a stereotype there. You know, gamer girl, D&D, what next? But the main thing that was a little nerve-wracking about the experience is we were able to get together to kind of talk about details, and one of the members was somebody that I went to high school with. I haven't seen them in over 10 years, and huh, I, I, I do hope that I'm unrecognizable, but I just think back to, I was transitioning. I was Julia, and people still saw me as the old me. And I'm very much afraid of that happening here. It's not so much that I don't mind about people knowing that I'm trans, I just don't want this person to all of a sudden tell everybody my dead name. Because, well, it's called a dead name for a reason. I want it to remain dead. And when it comes to meeting new people, I don't want them to know this name because I fear they're going to accidentally call me it. Like some of the friends I've had before the transition accidentally do on occasion. I figure if I just start off fresh, they just know me as Julia and... Huh. I'll just have to wait and see when that campaign picks off sometime in February. What exactly happens, but I'm a little nervous, but also a little excited because first time I've ever done this, and honestly, it kind of looks like fun. So the same woman that talked about the trans plateau also made an other video about girl hell. This is something I've seen other trans people talk about, but this was the one time I'm like, you know what, what, what is this? I want to know what they're talking about. And it's basically the idea that, well, you pass so frequently that you're just held in the same esteem as a regular woman. Which, in a lot of cultures, can be quite a bad thing. Women are very much seen as inferior to men in several different ways. In some cultures, it's a lot worse than others. In some, it's just more like a petty annoyance. And the other thing is the very high standard of beauty that women are held to. The idea that perhaps in junior high school there were a few young girls turning into women that purposely tried to starve themselves or do very crazy things in order to look like a Victoria's Secret model. And I don't really see myself as doing that because when it comes to looking at other women, the things that I get jealous about the most 
is the face, the hair, and the, uh, the chest size. And I don't think starving myself, gorging myself, or overexerting myself in any way is going to be able to fix any of that. And as for the idea of being looked down as inferior, well, that's kind of something I've just gotten used to over this time period. I mean, in fact, I'm kind of looked down as even more inferior by other groups. In fact, I am worse than a woman. I am a trans woman. I am some crazy man that thinks that he can become a beautiful woman, even though that is not possible. And if you've been watching all the way up to this point, you should know that it very much is possible. But I've very much gotten used to that idea, but I don't let that get me down. And on top of that, I've had a fair bit of training. I mean, my co-workers love to kind of bust balls when it comes to the idea of like, Oh, well, you're a woman now. You probably don't know how to drive so well, right? It's joking, but it's a way for me to be able to cope with such things. And it's like the one joke I always go for. Might as well get that ball busting in now while you got the chance. So after that is two more things that I think could just be separate videos. So I probably mentioned this one server I'm a part of that's all about voice training. The idea of trying to sound more like the gender I want to be. And one of the members there, just for fun, found this tier list about the side effects of hormone replacement therapy. That is one of the subjects I was thinking of for another video. And the other one was this other video I saw. The idea of dating a trans woman. And one of the things in the thumbnail, probably for clickbait, is, is it gay? <laughs> well, it's only gay if you're a woman dating a trans woman. But I figure that could be an interesting thing to go over because I wager there's probably some people that would want some dating tips for dating a trans woman. Of course, I'm not sure if I'd be the best to give that advice as I've never been on a date in my life, but I can at least kind of say how I want to be treated, how I would want the date to go, all that kind of stuff. I figure I might have some knowledge in there that might be useful for someone. So as I mentioned that one server when it came to voice training, about once a week I like to just open up a bit of a chat as a way for me to remember to speak more in a feminine voice. Because throughout the day, it has a tendency to get a little lower, and, well, if I didn't get any sleep, and if I got really bad nasal problems, I tend to just sound like this throughout most of the day. But if I can remember to just kind of perk up my voice a little bit, then eventually I'll be able to build up strength to just be able to sound like this normally. Well... One of the plagues I've often run into in these voice calls is people that don't wear headphones. Because then there's the echo from the monitor coming to the microphone and... Well, to me, the voice sounds like this. But the echo... Sounds a lot like this. And wow, is this ever disheartening. But there was one time there was a person without headphones this month that... I honestly heard a woman's voice. <laughs> And it was just wonderful. And I remember the last time I was able to do it, it was all for about maybe five seconds at the trainer of the server. And I just couldn't stop laughing. In fact, me just recalling it, that that was me when I first discovered that I can actually sound like a woman. It, it's still pretty difficult for me, but well... I'd like to think I've gotten closer to it along the way. Now, there was one other important thing that came out of that call as well. And I'm going to be very vague on the details, but... You may recall that a while ago I was part of this one trans support group and it ended very much in disaster. I remember like maybe a month later, I was curious to try to go at it again, but the only other servers I found were overrun by like 10,000 people. And for me, about 50 is about as high as I would want to go. And even then, I was just so worried about repeating the incident again. But I did find that the very group that I am looking for does exist. 
I don't feel alone anymore, like I'm some sort of freak that nobody can comprehend, but I am part of a group, and that is a very nice thing. However, trying to find this group is going to be a very, very difficult thing for me to do, but just the idea it's out there is just enough to give me some hope. Let's just say there's this one part of me that as soon as I reveal to people, it's it's almost like I'm coming out as trans all over again. I have to put my faith in people that someone will accept me. And I have to be fine with the fact that I might lose people that I've had relationships with for years because this doesn't sit right with them. I can definitely say it's it's a great feeling to realize that you're not alone. I just wish I could find more of these people, though. So this is the last thing to mention. I was able to go in for my second session of laser hair removal for my, shall we say, downstairs area. This was something I was a little nervous about, as I knew the tech that I went to see last time was very accepting, very understanding of my predicament. And they wanted to schedule a time again where they would be available. So when I saw somebody else was going to be taking care of that, I became very nervous. As I found out, this nervousness was very unfounded. The technician spoke about one of their employees having a trans daughter. They started their transition since third grade in elementary school. And, wouldn't you know, I got that same employee that had, had their daughter, so they were, they very much knew the boat that I was in, and obviously they were very much trans-accepting about it. And it was kind of nice to be able to talk about this kind of stuff a bit more objectively. Kind of the idea that, like, I'm a lot less further along in my journey as she's had the surgery, and... I'm trying my best to get prepped for it. And along the way, she was kind of explaining about, like, how their daughter were when they went through this very same process. It was very nice to hear that. As for the surgery itself, it was not nearly as painful as other people have described it. It was something that gave me hope. And it was also a very different perspective because, well, she had been transitioning since the third grade. For me, I always considered it a bit of a curse that I had to go through male puberty and now I have to figure out how to be able to reverse the effects of it and then go through female puberty. However, it was an interesting thing because in going through male puberty, it kind of makes the section of the body that I hate the most get a little bigger. And when that happens, there's a bit more to be able to work with when it comes for surgery. And yeah, it's just a very different perspective and one that I very much appreciated. I think that's about all I have for this month. <laughs> I figure, let's say this together. <laughs> Until next time, be yourself, no matter who that is. And if you need a hug right now, pretend you're this nice shark.